Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Legacies. Another great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, uh, we are continuing with Hope in the Afterlife, and obviously... The uh, ferryman is telling her, like, hey, peace is on the other side. Uh, but then, lo and behold, a familiar face shows. I'm like, yeah, we're not done with you yet. Uh, but it's not the necromancer. It's Ted. And so it's like, right, arch rivals are sitting down talking. So it is a situation where Hope is in this complicated situation of she doesn't know what to do. Because it's like, right, you once told me my family, my father in particular, will never be at peace unless they know that I'm at peace and I'm okay. So if I cross over, then maybe I'm doing justice to my mom, my dad, my uncle. Like, maybe they'll finally be okay. But then what about the people? The other thing, too, is like, well, what about the people you want to protect from Malivore? It's like... You know, you can only save one. You can go to peace and potentially save your family, or you can go back and save your other family. Like, it's almost a thing of, like, maybe I can't do both, but maybe by saving your family from Malivore, maybe in turn and eventually you will get to the point that you will save your other family as well. It's a complicated thing because they'll never be at peace knowing that you're gone, especially because you need to come back. It's up to you. You're the only one that can stop Malivore. So, yeah. but even Ted's like, I don't remember much as my time as the uh, Necromancer, so I can't tell you whether that was truthful, whether that was me just being a manipulative person. Because he was like, I was very good at that. But Hope is like, if you see my mom, my dad, or my uncle, tell them don't wait for me. Jumps into the water and wakes up. You know, she's back to the world of living. But the problem is, because she's in transition, she has access to nothing. Like, I think some of her super strength came back momentarily, but it's like, she doesn't have her magic number of wolf powers, or, you know, she's not a vampire yet until she fully transitions. So, she's still in that, she's in that limbo state, as, you know, uh, Malivore says. That's why he picked this time, because, like, right, now I know how to kill you. It's like, right, I forgot about the whole snafu of, like, right, how you kill a vampire who's transitioning is... They don't drink blood. If you stop them, like, drinking blood is the only thing that fully transitions them and it saves them. But if they, if you don't, they die. So, she has no choice but, uh, well, he has no choice but to wait till now. Like, right, if he can stop her from drinking blood, from fulfilling, like, fulfilling the full transition, then, like, he stops her and kills her, so... But um, at the same time, you know, everyone's formulating their plans as, uh, which I love that uh, Ethan and um, Caleb, it's like, hey, have you heard the good word? And it's like, I have no interest. It's like, uh, it's like, oh, we're not here. It's like, he's like, I, for one, he's like, for one, I'm Jewish. It's like, don't worry. This, Oh, this ain't about the big JC. It's about the big M. And it's like, Mormons? And it's just like, oh, no, Malivore. And they're just like, fine. And... They've been gooing people all over the place, you know, so. But now it's up to, you know, the squad uh, to divide and conquer. And uh, so we have uh, Lizzie and MG because it's up to MG to kind of lead a charge. Because this is one of those instances where Lark is like, okay, like, I'm going to have to go off on my own because it's what I do. But they all made their promises to Hope. So it's like, yeah, this is him keeping up his end of the bargain. So Lizzie's like, right, this is the one time we'll allow you to put Hope Michelson first. So he goes off in his own. MG's leading the squad and they divide and conquer. Uh, her and Lizzie and uh, and MG cross paths with Ethan. Well, it's MG versus Ethan, but it's like he knows about the supernatural world now because of what uh, being part of... Because he's like, I'm not technically... Uh, I'm not technically uh, Mal uh, Malivore. Well, I'm not technically... Uh, um, Ethan right now on Malivore, because Malivore is kind of piloting the ship, and he's just one of his, like, goo monsters right now to an extent, but, well, pup, one of his goo puppets, but not only that, he did get a sprinkle of Supernatural. I wonder what did he fuse into? Maybe it was something we've come across before. Well, I we found out about Caleb's fuse with, but I... It, it, it might be something from the earlier seasons we crossed paths with, but whatever it is, it has... It might not be full-blown invisibility. It might be technically, like, camouflage... Whatever the case may be, uh, he can make himself appear invisible at the very least. So it's like, cool. It's like, right, you you wanted to play superhero. About time you went up against a supervillain. And it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, time to time to uh, 
put on your big boy tights and, you know, go superhero mode because it's like, yeah, we, we're doing this. So, obviously, MG doesn't want to do this, you know. But at the end of the day, uh, luckily, Lizzie was able to stop. I wonder, is it because, like, because it did kill him temporarily, but I'm wondering, is I, is in that moment, did she absorb the malivore of it? Well, because I guess because he is something supernatural, so she probably, like, surged too much all at once and ended up killing him f as a byproduct. Because I was like, I don't think she absorbed all, like, the magic that is, like, malivore inside of her. I think, inside of Ethan, I think it was just, like, because he's a supernatural and she ended up draining, like, more than she meant to. Uh, but it's like, great, now I, I killed, uh, the one guy that likes me, and it's like, no, he's not the only guy that likes you, she's like, wait, I just felt because, you know, it's like, yeah, they're still figuring that out, but, um, luckily they were able to shock him back to life, but that's a complicated situation now, because she knows how MG feels about her, but she also, well, she likes MG, but she also does really like Ethan, too, so now it's gonna be, ah, it's gonna be complicated, then we circle back over to, like, you know, um, uh, Josie, Wade, and Jed, as well as, uh, Finch, um, Jed and, uh, Wade are kind of been put on, like, making sure everyone gets out of the school, and it's like, right, we'll just pop in every 30 minutes, you know, checking in on you guys, making sure everything's okay, and so she needs Finch, she needs someone there that's going to support her, like, if she's about to do dark mag black magic, and it's like, right, if I do this, I need you to, like, pull me back, and, you know, light the candle to stop me from speaking, and it's like, how do I know when to light it? Oh, you know, so doesn't go well. And uh, Dark Side Josie, and I love that she's like, Are, "Do they really call you Dark Josie?" But I think that presents that presented a situation where it's kind of what people have talked about before. Because obviously, like this has been Josie's biggest fear ever since learning that about herself. That like, oh, she has this dark side. And Fitch, you know, as someone who's like, right, she spent so long afraid of her werewolf side, but she's embraced it. And that's what she wants Josie to do. Because she's like, right, like, you'll never be Josie. Like, saying this the dark side Josie, being like, you'll never be Josie as long as there's one side of you trying to take care, take control of the other. So I think it is like, Josie needs an equilibrium. She needs to accept both the light and, I mean, everyone's very made up of the light and the darkness. Like, it, you know, and it's just a question of, will she find that, um, uh, road to twilight or dusk? Road to twilight slash dawn. And I think that's because... She's always, like, she's always trying to be, like, no, I'm going to be fully good Josie all the time. That's just who I'm going to be. But also, like, uh, but her dark side is like, no, I'm going to be dark side Josie the entire time. But Finch ends up being like, right, then I will love your dark side while, you know. So that kind of puts her in a very unique position because it's like, right, I'm going to love you regardless because you're, I love Josie as she is. But it's also like, I will love your dark side until you find a way to fix. It's like, right, like. She has to, it still isn't settled, but I think Finch might be the linchpin necessary to, like, find that, like, because I think if Josie, Jos and to be fair, this might help Josie out in the long run, being not that perfect balance, you know, because, like, having just all the light isn't working for her, having all the dark doesn't work for her, she needs that perfect, like, balance between the two, I think to be fully Josie, because I think even now, as she is, like, she's not fully herself, because, yeah, she has a dark side, but it's, like, once she's able to kind of fully control that, like, once it's, like I said, that equilibrium, once they're equal footing, I think that'll change things, and it, it might be the thing, too, and this might be something Finch might be thinking about, too, whether she's really thinking about it, whether it becomes a thing later on, it might be the thing that ultimately gives her the edge when it comes to the, uh, merge, because full light side Josie will be about Right, I might let Lizzie win. Full dark side Josie will be like, no, I'm going to kill uh, Lizzie. Uh, but the balance, she will make the choice on her own of like, right, I'm, I'm not going to tr like, I'm not going to try to win, but I'm also not going to try and lose. I will give it my all. I think that might be something we might be sparking, we might be starting right now. So we'll ultimately have to wait and see where that goes. But that's kind of my thought process currently with that. But um, because... Um, Josie tried to grab Landon, uh, who was kind of locked into a, uh, because of, uh, locked away because of, uh, Malivore. Uh, in particular, it was, like, trapping him in a memory. I think it was, like, one of those, uh, foster families he was in. He was kind of locked in the closet. I think that had come up before. 
you know, about like obviously like Raphael and like Landon's experience in foster homes and stuff. But ultimately, um, when it comes down to that, Cleo luckily found him and like they are working together because they need to get out. But it's like, how do we get out? But the problem is like, what, what made Cleo realize is like, right, we aren't just like, this entire place isn't just like a place inside of Mount Lavore. It is Mount Lavore. So she reaches down and like she grabs his mud like she's inspired. And she plans on making a, like the best way out of Mount Lavore. Mount Lavore himself is a doorway. So making a door from his mud. Um, on the flip side, Alaric has to go through some uh, puppets and uh, knocks everybody out. And then goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Caleb, which we now get a better picture of like, right. Um... He's the, um, he's the part dragon. I was like, now that's interesting. I didn't realize, like, the wings and everything, it didn't correlate. And the fire, it didn't correlate my head of, like, right. He fused me with the dragon. Interesting. Um, which, if, interesting enough, if you don't remember, the actress who plays, uh, I'm already blanking on her. I I always blank on her name. I'm, I'm so I feel so upset by it. The actress who played the dragon, at least like the humanoid form of the dragon, like what's that? The first episode of Legacies is um the actress who plays uh, Connie in The Walking Dead. Obviously, like it's like November fifth at the time of recording this, but she's also in Eternals, so uh, that's dope. But it's like yeah, that's the same actress. Um, I don't remember she had popped up as Connie already in The Walking Dead by the time the show started. She might have. I don't remember. I think she did, didn't she? Because didn't this start like 2018 is when this started, I think? Yeah, she was already in The Walking Dead by then, I believe. Um, I think at the time I just didn't correlate it. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, but regardless, tangents and all that side, it just kind of stuck in my mind. But um, Alaric was willing to bet his life on it because it's like, right, you're, you don't want to do this and you're kind of warning me away. Um the fact is, there's still some good, there's still some form of Caleb in there, and he was able to reach Caleb for a while, but, um, your boy, um, uh, Malivore just had to step in, he's like, oh, boy, he's quite a crybaby, isn't he, you know, and he plans on, um, like, he's like, oh, like, everyone is going to forget, uh, because I'm going to consume everything, I'm going to consume your students, but you, I'm going to let you, I'm not going to consume you because I want everyone to know that you and your school are, are a failure. Oh, but that, don't get it twisted. You're still going to die. I'm going to kill you. So, uh, But luckily, Hope broke out and ended up like knocking Caleb out. And it's like, right, she needs to transition. And obviously, it's like, this isn't what either one of them wanted, but that is fate. And obviously, he feeds her to blood. Because I was scared of like, right, her first like time, I'm like, is she going to like go too far and accidentally kill a lark. That's what I was worried about. Still a potentiality, like, later on, but we'll get to that when we get there. But I'm like... Also, it's, like, the super scariest thing ever. Like, the clouds go dark red. I'm like, this is some apocalypse of... I mean, to be fair, she is breaking the laws of nature. Like, a hybrid is one thing. You are the tribrid. You are the only of your kind. So it, like, goes against the... Like, her existence, she was never supposed to exist. I mean, to the point, her freaking, um... Well, her mom, well, her aunt was afraid, well, wanted her, obviously, like, their mom tried to kill her, so, uh, their aunt, well, her great aunt wouldn't get to her, but still, uh, she's not supposed to exist, like, people have wanted her dead before she was even born, when she was still in, um, Haley's stomach, um, well, belly, but regardless, it's like, now she's, like, fully, like souped up and it's just kind of like and just it's so crazy seeing that like um like the eyes the fangs it's like dude and yep still has access to her magic and she's just show off too because it's like oh let me show you every bit of like why i'm the tribrid it's like pushes you with magic because it's like that was my thing of like i know once you become a vampire you lose your magic i was like i figured they were going i figured it's like her being the tribrid there was going to be a different circumstance there, but I just wasn't sure, but I'm like, yeah, she's the loophole in that, it's like, I was like, this is, you're too, this is broken, this is one of the most broken beings in existence, you have the, you have the strength and power of a vampire, which you can rip through anything, a lot of bloodlust and killing, especially running in your family, not just your dad, but 
the rest of you, your aunts and uncles as well, but also you got access to magic. So the combo of like pushing you back with magic, dashing over with your super speed, punching with super strength. Then also it's like, right, but you haven't seen the, my werewolf side yet. And she turns into a wolf later on. It's like, she's just showing off. Then bites her arm, turns it into a freaking blood sword. I'm like, this is the most broken being in existence. I mean, because I love that he's like, I eat monsters. And she's like, but you've never gone up against a monster. There's no monster like me in history, you know? Which is interesting considering, like, he, I mean, because every monster he's ever eaten, typically there was more than one of them. I mean, well, at, at least one. But it's like, yeah, like, but there's nothing else like her that's made up of multiple, like, because everything else he's ever eaten is one creature. I mean, just like, I mean, I think that's the perfect balance of it, too. It's like, two beings that, like, because there's only one Malivore. Like, yes, like, there's Clark. Yes, there's, um... Landed, but even Clark isn't the same thing as Malivore. He doesn't, you know, so Malivore is one of a kind, Hope is one of a kind, so that's why they're the perfect, like, that's why it's like a the ultimate battle of light versus darkness type of situation. But on the inside, as Cleo's building her door, Malivore switches places with him, and now um, Landon's back on the outside just when Hope's about to kill Malivore. But he's still telling her, like, you have to do it, because there's no telling, like, how long... I'll be able to say like this. Because the sad thing is, um, she tried to get Landon first. Uh, Josie did. But who's to say if she had actually succeeded, like, would they have been able to kill Malivore like they did? Who knows? Um, at the end of the day, because um, Cleo stopped it from happening because she didn't realize what was happening at the time. But also, it was probably a necessary part of the plan of, like, to lock uh, Malivore away, but like, you know, because he has access to all the different Landons, you know, and it's like, um, she's like, are you the real Landon Kirby? It's like, yeah, I bet you ask all the Landons that. She's like, maybe I should have, um, but obviously Landon wants her, like, Landon already had this solidified, like, even when he was talking to Caleb and, um, Alaric, he knew what this meant, like, I have to die to save everyone, like, it's the only way, and he knows what this means for hope, but if it, you know, He's like, you know, fate brought us here, and but it's something that needed to be done. Like, because I think even if he stabbed himself with the weapon, it wouldn't do it. It had to still be done. Like, it had to be in Hope's hand. The weapon still needed to be in her hand to end this. Because if he had stabbed himself, it probably wouldn't have gone through. Because it's probably like, by being connected to her, like, everything that she is as a tribe, it probably flows through the weapon. Yes, it's made of her blood, but it probably fully activated. It needs to be in her hands. Like, why she had to be the one to do it. Why he couldn't just do it. I think that's kind of the big difference, so... And, you know, she thought she was ready for this, to become the tribe, to kill the per person that she loved. But now it's like, it's a different situation when he's right in front of her. But that's what Malivore was hoping for. But then Malivore is like, oh, I'm never going to let you glow, Cleo. So he pushes her out of the way, goes through the door. I was like, she tricked you, didn't she? And it's like, yeah, she learned a trick or two from you. It's like, you think there was a bright light door on the other side. It's like, no. Because uh, was, she was saying, like, she's going to, like, give him a different body uh, to... Um, that she was going to give him a different body to um, jump into until they get his body back. But then it's like, no, it was a trick. She's like, you think I was going to fall for this again? It's not a doorway. It's a prison for you. But um, in the moment, like at the same time, you had um, luckily the entire squad of like, you know, um, Josie, Fitch, Wade, and Jed are working together. I was like, on a scale to how is this going to hurt from one to mommy? And Jed's looking at me like, what? Um, but they channel everything together into jo Josie and she pulls Cleo out. He's like, at least you're going to die here with me while I'm dying. It's like, nope, it's a squad thing. So he dies himself and Inferno consumes him, which I'm assuming consumes everything that was inside of him. So like every supernatural creature that was a part of him, which once again is, is sad to think about because Landon's mom is somewhere in there. Uh, but I guess maybe she's like full, bl either got eaten by something by this point in time or just w whatever. Like they've never really covered that side of things because she is and she was in there somewhere. But um, maybe the thought was and maybe they answer that early on on. On and I just don't remember, but it's like, yeah, maybe she's just straight up going, like, like I said, eaten by something at this point. But regardless, Malivore is finally dead, and it's just, and in a moment, uh, you have um, Hope just walk away like that. I was like, that's not even going to carry his body back or something. I was like, 
way. I was like, I was like, that should have been a clear sign then and there. But luckily, they were able to save Cleo. But sadly, not with Landon. And obviously, Caleb wakes up, and it's like, turns out. So anyone that was fused with something supernatural, which it seems like it was only Caleb and Ethan that kept their supernatural thing that they were mixed with. So not only is he a vampire, he's part dragon, which is pretty sick. You know, it's like, right, he made a mistake, but, you know, it's like, why did I do what I did? And, you know, um, you have um, Alaric being like, the fact is that you, um, you know, we do stupid things for love. He's like, I, I know, he's been there time and time again. And so... Obviously, Cleo is there being like, yeah, let's go on our date, you know, but like, can we say like a word uh, for Landon, you know, a prayer for Landon? And that's a sad thing, because that's also the heartbreaking thing, like, Cleo's fine, so they got Cleo back, and, you know, Caleb's happy about that, but it's still like, right, Landon's gone, you know? And so, Lizzie and MG are dealing with like, right, because he is a supernatural, the compulsion doesn't work, so... Uh, the compulsion kind of got erased. Now Ethan's going to remember everything. So I think he's going to hate us. Uh, but ultimately, he doesn't. Uh, he's like, yeah, you guys like saved my life. But, you know, maybe I should go back to talk to Dr. Saltzman. I mean, I am a supernatural now, so I get to enroll at the school. So I was like, yeah, that's happening. But it's kind of an awkward thing now because it's like, well, another love, tri uh, love triangle situation. Uh, I mean, this universe loves its love triangles. I have no problem with it, you know, it's like, it's it's the thing of like, I just want everyone to be happy and just, you know, that's always what I wanted, because the sad thing, someone's always going to walk away with their heart hurt in some shape or form, but the fact of the matter is, it's like, now Lizzie's in a love triangle, I mean, MG's always had a thing for her, um, but now it's like, right, uh, he has feelings for her, she knows how he feels, but she also has feelings for Ethan, so it's like, it's kind of that situation of who she going to choose. I personally must be like, I hope her and MG get together. But it's also like, once again, someone's going to walk away from that situation with a broken heart. So that's definitely going to be interesting. Also, the fact that Ethan can turn invisible, you know that's going to turn into some heartbreaking situations where like he's going to try and surprise her. But some like conversations are going to be had around him. And he's like going to walk away like, oh, I, I see how it is. Or either they don't realize he's around or they do. Like, it's going to turn into that. I mean, there's no telling how long he was there while they were having that conversation. So he probably heard what they were saying but once again he's not mad at them because it's like you saved my life i owe you my life so i think we're kind of all even here so but um him and mg can do the whole superhero thing because now it's like right he is a supernatural now so that's the problem of like yeah uh even no matter what like humans always get dragged into the supernatural world and sometimes they'll come out of it not human anymore so we'll see where things kind of go um from here but um, at the end, we had a Lark meeting, and Hope was like, oh, you alone? I was like, oh, please, don't go, oh, don't go alone, Rick. And she was like, right, because she wanted to talk to Rick before she left, because she's like, I can't come back. She's like, I thought I was ready, but I wasn't. And she's like, why didn't you ever tell me about just shutting off the humanity part? I was like, you didn't. Please tell me you didn't. I'm like, oh, no, Hope. I was like, that's the worst thing you can do. Vampire 101, never turn off your humanity. Um... Uh, because did, I was about to say, like, I was I was wondering to myself, I was like, did that ever happen in this series? Didn't Caleb kind of do that to MG? I don't know if he made him turn off his humanity. But, I, I mean, MG's a ripper. And so Caleb was, like, pushing and pushing and kind of let that loose a little bit. But I don't remember beyond that. Like, because I'm trying to think. I don't know. If, do correct me in the comments down below. I don't think that's come up in this show. I can remember instances in the previous ones. I don't... Also, correct me, too. I don't remember ever coming up in the originals. Because I know the two times I can think of it, I know... One time was when... Uh, Klaus made Stefan turn off his humanity so they could go, like, living it up. Um, and then also when... Um, Caroline's mom died, she turned off her humanity. So I remember that. Those are two distinct instances I remember in the original show, The, the Vampire Diaries, not the original. I, like, I'm trying to remember, did that ever come up in the originals of anyone turning off their humanity? I don't remember. Obviously, there's that transitional period where becoming a vampire, like, heightens who you are. So, like, you know, um, 
people losing a bit of themselves, which is, you thought that was kind of a concern for Hope. It's like, oh, it's an even bigger concern because it seems... Now, whether she did that fully subconsciously, whether she did it so that she could kill Landon without hesitation, whether she... Because she said it like, the moment she killed Landon, it switched off. Now, whether it's just because in that moment, she's like, I don't want to feel this because... As a vampire, it's like, you're already a heightened emotional state. Your emotions are flared up. Like, everything about you is heightened. And you're still a fresh vampire, too, on top of that. Killing the man that you, the person that you love, like, of course, that's going to, like, break you. So, but also, it's like, you know, as Alaric says, he knows from personal experience, turning off your humanity does not, is never the solution. It, if, if anything, it's the worst thing you can do. But now it's like, right, she's like cutting herself off from everyone, like her feelings of love and loss and being that fear and everything. And it's like, no, like I need to go. It's like, so I need you to tell the others don't follow me. And he's like, you did regardless, they are going to. And she's like, not if I live a big enough sign. So part of me is like, at least she she hasn't did the classic. Because if this was like, I mean, hell, this was if this was Damon Stefan or even... um. Klaus, we would have had a ripped out heart situation going on here. I can definitely see that uh, being the case. So, um, but yeah, that's where things stand there. But we do get our ending. Where, well, we also got in the afterlife on the well, per, uh, limbo essentially because it's not necessarily the afterlife. Uh, Ted tries to take a coin from the ferryman. He's like, "Hey." And the ferryman was like, uh, 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 because no matter what, Hope was at least got a free pass because she spent her entire life being a hero. So like, oh, she, her her uh, price was her necklace, which she wasn't willing to give up. But nothing Ted gives the um, ferryman. Uh, but I think his journey to redemption is what's going to give him the item. But then like, he runs into his like, oh my old arrival. I don't worry about it, my old rival. We've all we found our way out of worse situations than this. So. It's definitely going to be interesting to see where things kind of go from there because we're we're not done. Because um, I think Landon will be the only one who can bring hope back potentially. Um, I am curious to see if they're going to do that. I, I'm, I'm assuming they are like keep Landon human the entire time. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Landon, and that's not. I mean, not unless it is supposed to be Malivore, but I think it is supposed to just be Landon. But if you do, if Landon does come back, will it just be Landon, or will some part of Malivore live on with him? Because I'm curious, are they going to just keep him human the entire time, or whatever? Like if, like if he can be brought back, he's the only. I don't know. Because um, I'm also curious, because I think that might tie into one of the her without her humanity might tie into why a certain other character might be making a re return once again I don't want to spoil it in case you don't want to know but a certain character is coming back and I'm like I wonder does, does their story tie into at least like the like articles that were got recommended to me once again just like google alerts let me know about something but I'm like I'm assuming that I once again I hate that that happens, but that's the byproduct of me, like, Googling stuff just, like, to get episode titles for, like, my reviews and stuff like that. So, because of that, I'm constantly getting, like, related, like, Google alerts. Like, oh, like, oh casting news or, like, some um, TV show news and stuff like that. Regardless, changes and all that aside, it's definitely going to be interesting to see where the next episode takes us going forward with all of this. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.